Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Park of uh, Apocalypse. I'm Gary Machuda, and I'm going to do a year in review here on the Park of Apocalypse. We're going to look at all the videos that we put out over the year, uh, make some comments on it, talk a little bit about the channel. So if you're new to this channel, this would actually be a very good place to start just so you know how much content is on here and what you could find if you search for it. So let the Apocrypha Apocalypse begin. All right, so I wanna go through this since uh, the year is ending and we've put together, I think a good collection of videos over that year. Talk a little bit about what the channel is and some of the videos. And I hope that maybe we could have William Albrecht join us and we could do a program where we talk about which videos that we felt were most impactful, most cutting edge, uh, which ones, um, you know, were uh, eye openers for us personally, and also uh, take some questions and uh, find out what other people think about what we've been doing on this channel. The channel's name is Apocrypha Apocalypse. I got this name simply because the seven Old Testament books and two uh, and two sections in Daniel and also some sections in the Book of Esther are called Deuterocanonical by the Catholic Church and also by Orthodox, but uh, they're called Apocrypha in a protestantism because they reject their inspiration of canonicity and so this channel is dedicated to those books so we call it the apocrypha and apocalypse is a greek word that means to reveal to unveil so this is the unveiling for our non-catholic friends and even for some catholics that yeah these books are indeed inspired and canonical text a reason why i put this channel up it's because over the years, I've written a couple of books on the Deutero canon, I've done many, many talks. But I realized that only a small fraction of people actually sit down and read hard copies of works. Very, very few people. And even if I put this on the web, uh, it still wouldn't be very many people. So social media, video, I think, is a good medium to ex have the access to this information to the public. I also don't like the idea of standing behind a paywall because uh, this is very important information. A lot of it has been forgotten or suppressed, or quite frankly, the questions have never been asked uh, about these books and their proper place within the Old Testament. And so uh, the Apocrypha Apocalypse is my social media outlet to get this information out to the public and get the conversation going. And I have to say, I've been very pleased with the results so far because um, although we've only been up and running for around a year or so, uh, this channel, and this channel, by the way, is a micro, micro niche of all the channels out there um, in regards to uh, theology. I mean, it's uh, you could get millions of hits if you talk about popular culture. You could get uh, maybe hundreds of thousands of hits if you're talking about Christianity in general or Islam or something like that. Uh, you could get tens of thousands of hits if you focus even narrowly into apologetics on one party against another. But when you're focusing something so narrowly on something like uh, the Old Testament and specifically the question of which books belong in the Old Testament. And that is everything that you put on this channel. This is a micro, micro niche. Now, that being said, uh, here we are stand at almost a year later. I'm not sure of the exact date that we started. But I mean, currently, we have well over a thousand subscribers. And so I think that's a success. We've got hundreds of hours of video uh, out there, and people have responded. In fact, I've received several emails from Protestants who have become convinced that there was a serious mistake that took part in the Protestant Reformation, and that these books are indeed authentic scripture, indeed inspired scripture. And so I'm grateful that uh, the message got through and you were able to see mostly from primary source material. That's what William Albrecht and myself love to dive into is 
primary source material, the, the question of the canon. So I thought here's the, at the end of the year, it's great to do a summary of the work that's on the channel because there's an enormous amount of information here, many, many videos. And especially if you're a first time visitor, this can be a little overwhelming. So I wanted to give an overview of the different topics that we discussed. And like I said, maybe I'll get William on, we'll do a live program and we could talk about the best videos and, and things like that. So let me share my screen here and you can see uh, basically what's on the page currently. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. We started off with a series of things, these episodes. This is part of, I guess you could say, um, it would be a pilot for a possible uh, video production or even TV show that centers on the question of the canon. And so I wanted to make a kind of proof, uh, proof of uh, concept video. So I thought the graphics were pretty decent. That's kind of what I wanted to see done in that series. Of course, these are fairly short. They're somewhere around 10 minutes long, uh, covering some issues, uh, ideas, thoughts on the Deuteral canon. Actually, this was a year ago, my own understanding of thoughts, and I think the cases that could be made for the subjects in this series, but which, by the way, I made long before this. This was done years ago, as you could probably tell by the color of my hair, um, have expanded and deepened. And uh, so I, I just want to start off this uh, channel with some decent quality episodes just to whet your appetite. Uh, moving on, of course, we did live stream broadcast, William Albrecht and myself. Uh, there is a two-part series that covers a common objection against the Deuterocanon called the, uh, the bookends argument of the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah. Does that exclude the Deuterocanon? Gave a two-part uh, treatment of that where I dive into the text. I also gave a very, very important video, I believe, and that's Luther's canonical flip-flop, where I show that Martin Luther actually used the Deuterocanon in debate to serve as proof to establish doctrine. And the Deuterocanon was used all the way up until 1519, where in a debate with purgatory, he denies that it can be used. It cannot, it is inadmissible at that point. And, excuse me, my phone went off. And uh, from that point on, the Deuterocanon was now apocrypha, it can't be used, so on and so forth. Very important video, lots of groundbreaking information. This largely comes from my book, Why Catholic Bibles Are Bigger, second edition put out by Catholic Answers Press. Did a response to Alan Parr's uh, treatment of Josephus there with the one big problem. Um, had a uh, commentary on Dr. Bill Mounts's uh, video on what is the Apocrypha, which is a very intriguing, I think, very interesting. I, I like Bill Mounts' work. I always liked his work with the Greek. And, um, you know, he says some things that are, I think are honest and, and very intriguing. Another two things that we put out that I thought was pretty important, and indeed, you should check it out. This should be something every person who comes to the page uh, deals with. And that is taking the Apocrypha Apocalypse Challenge, in which I pose a question, and I won't spoil it here, for the listener to propose an answer. And of course, since I want to help you, I actually provide in another video, as you can see here, 50 Protestant commentaries on Hebrews 1135b. So we look at 50 Protestant commentaries early commentaries, late commentaries, uh, Arminian to Reformed, um, scholarly to popular, um, everything in between, you know, all different types of uh, Protestant perspectives. All these 50 commentaries, I give you their perspective on the issue and see what the scholars and what uh, commentators, Protestant commentators over history has said about the question posed in the Apocrypha Apocalypse Challenge. Um, I also do holes in the narrative one. That's a, also a very interesting thing where we talk about uh, if there's any um, quotations, you know, and things like that. 
in the New Testament of the Deuteral Canon. We did several interviews, by the way. One of the first interviews we did was with Trent Horn. We talked a little bit about inerrancy in the canon, also uh, talked about his debate um, on the Deuteral Canon, did a debrief. Very, it's always great to have Trent on the show. Trent's just wealth of information, very articulate. Um, I exposed the question that were the fathers at Trent dumb? And this has been a canard that has circulated within Protestantism. I trace it back to Salmon, um, but it may have even gone before Salmon, this charge that the, the fathers at the Council of Trent were idiots. They didn't know the ancient languages. They were incompetent. They, they couldn't talk uh, authoritatively about the canon. In that video, I debunked that myth. Um, we did a live stream with Dr. Douglas Beaumont on Wisdom 11, a very interesting passage, one that is often misunderstood and used against the Book of Wisdom. Dr. Beaumont, who is a, a convert from evangelicalism, uh, looks at it in terms of uh, philosophy, and you might be surprised with his interpretation of Wisdom 11. Now, another big, um, big, big important subject is Josephus in the canon. So we did a three-part series on Josephus, as you can see here. Um, very interesting stuff. I go into detail, again, working with primary source material, although I do quote a few secondary sources just to confirm what I've observed in the primary sources. Had Carlo Broussard from Catholic Answers on, did a live stream with him. Um, we uh, also tackled the question of the cessation of prophecy on this channel. This is also one of those huge myths that I don't know why, but even scholars will base and put a lot of weight on this belief that supposedly prophecy ceased at the time of Malachi or Artaxerxes, and it was non-existent until the New Testament era. And so as you can tell here on this screenshot, we go in depth into as much evidence as I could find to bring to bear on this question. So we look at Old Testament evidence. We look at deuterocanonical evidence. We look at extra biblical evidence. We look at early church evidence. We look at first, second century Jewish evidence. We look at later Jewish evidence. We, we bring uh, pseudepigraphical works, uh, everything you can think of to bear on this question is there really a sound foundation to believe in the cessation of prophecy? And the conclusion there, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but quite frankly, once you look at the evidence, it's pretty much all there. Um, we also had some Spanish language programming as well, and I hope we could do a lot more because we need to get this information because, like I said, a lot of this information just simply isn't known and it's swept under the rug or buried in academic books, but it's very important that I think every Christian should know. Uh, so uh, we've done some Spanish language uh, apologetics on the Deutero canon. We've done some deep dives. As you can see here, William Albrecht did a video on the incarnation of the Deutero canon. Uh, we looked at Augustine. We looked at questions about uh, Maccabees. Um, how ancient is my Protestant Bible? We've done a couple of videos on that. We also did, uh, I did a video where I look at a common argument that many Protestants use to try to establish not only the old, but the New Testament canon, this golden thread kind of argument. And I show that that is not just wrong, but it's dangerous. Because if you have anybody who even slightly even slightly is critical and dives into the thinking involved in that, it, it would undermine the authority of scripture entirely. So we, I look at that and kind of debunk that fall, fallacious way of thinking. Soul Scriptura in the canon we had with John Martinoni, the blue collar apologist himself. Uh, we talk about new stuff too. If something's in the, the news, we uh, cover it as well. For example, there were some manuscripts, fragments uh, discovered in Qumran area. So we had a video on that. What does that tell us? Does it change any of the evidence we know from Qumran? Um, we dive deep in the theology and the Deuterocanon. So we talked about the Eucharist and the Deuterocanon. 
the death and triumph of Christ in the Deuterocanon. Canon. We also focused on list. We've done a number of videos that uh, Protestant scholars always appeal to list, but they never bother to look deeply into what are these lists meant to represent. In fact, that's almost never brought up. It's just assumed that if somebody makes a list of Old Testament books, that that list is therefore a canon. And uh, I show that that's not true. So we look at Melito Sardis, we look at Athanasius, we look at Origen, we looked at all these different lists. We look at the problem of coherence, that how incoherent some of the approaches to these lists are. Hilary of Poitier, Cyril Jerusalem. Actually, we did a couple of uh, two-parter on Athanasius. Gregory of Nazianzus, Amphiliochius, Rufinus, all of those lists, and also Epiphanius as well, and others, uh, such as Augustine, and I think we also do Jerome. All of that we did this year, and we took a, a, a deep look into them. We looked at primary source material, and uh, yeah, so I presented my case there. We also did some more research in Protestantism, which is very, very cool. And we uncovered things that most Protestants are totally unaware of. For example, the radical reformers, uh, the radical reformation did not follow Luther in rejecting these books. So they used the deuterocanonical books. We actually look at some English translations of their works where you can actually see them using that. <clears throat> not only the Anabaptists, the Anabaptists also, we have. Um, Jan Hus and John Wycliffe, two people that are often looked at as kind of proto-Protestants, see that they also use the Deuterocanon to confirm doctrine. Um, looked at Jerome. I look at uh, several, a couple of videos also. I take a look at Dr. Norm Geisler, um, who uh, proposed some really bad arguments against the Deuterocanon. So I I kind of exposed some of the problems with his argumentation. Uh, again, uh, further, we looked into what are prophets. We looked at Eucharist and Sirach. We look at Marian typology, all of these in the Deuterocanon. The problem of Enoch, that's an interesting take because uh, Enoch is truly apocryphal. So how does Enoch stack up against the so-called apocrypha? Very interesting comparison. William Albrecht did one on 2 Maccabees, Hebrews 11, and the early church fathers, where he kind of expands on how the early church fathers understood it. Um, talk about rabbinic uh, discussions about other books, including proto-canonical books, uh, such as Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs, Esther. Not only that, but we also looked at discussions about Sirach within rabbinic literature. Uh, Again, uh, diving into theology, diving into current events, we covered an awful lot of ground. Uh, just recently, the last couple of videos we uploaded was uh, one that uh, was a live stream William and I did on the German Bibles before Luther, which is very cool. William had some uh, screenshots of some of these early Bibles. Very telling, and it really shows how Luther's German translation was very innovative and not seen before in Germany, as far as I can tell, uh, that where these books are not intermixed, they always intermixed. And just lately, uh, a day ago, in fact, the comprehens incomprehensibility of God, analogy, and wisdom in the early church. This focuses on um, a new form of philosophy that's really taking hold amongst some Protestants in regards to God that uh, deny certain things like God is immutable, uh, denies that um, God is, um, uh, what do I want to say, um, that we can know God only through analogy and that God is essentially incomprehensible. Um, and these people deny this idea of analogy. And what they're basically doing is pulling the transcendent God into creation and making him understandable. And of course, that is not God. So what's really important here is that the Deuterocanon really stresses, and in fact, insists on the idea of analogy and the incomprehensibility of God. And uh, again, since Protestants don't have recourse to these books, 
it, this kind of philosophy is given more weight than it really deserves because it, it does contradict the revelation that God gave. So those are all the videos that we put out within the last year. As you see, we put out an awful lot on a lot of subjects, a lot of in-depth analysis, and we're only scratching the surface in regards to the Deuterocan. There's a lot, lot more out there. And so I just want to thank all of you for supporting this channel, especially those who subscribe. I appreciate that because that makes it more visible and it helps it, others to access the same information. So thank you for subscribing. Thank you for telling your friends about this channel, linking it, so on and so forth. And also thank you for your support on Patreon. William Albrecht and myself are both on Patreon and we truly appreciate your support because your support enables us to purchase material that we use for these videos for research. And some of these, uh, are, some of these um, books and other resources are quite expensive because they're specialized and they're really meant more for academic work. And it's because of your support that we're able to do the in-depth primary source research that we're doing. So thank you so much. And, and if you haven't, uh, yet subscribe please do and if you'd like to support us please do we really appreciate it so that's about it i hope you enjoyed the program and as always uh god bless and have a great week and i'll talk to you soon bye bye